What's up, Parmenix? Pyrostasis here. We are back in the world of uh, FTB Unleashed, and I uh, wanted to show you guys how we're going to automate our smell tree today. Now, first off, uh, I did plant a little rubber tree orchard over here. Um, actually, I don't know if that even really counts as an orchard, but because I think orchards pretty much have to be fruit, so rubber really isn't a fruit. So let's just pretend I didn't call it an orchard. Anyways, you'll also notice that this rubber is not the same rubber that uh, is dropped in IC2, which is what we're going to need for uh, those items that you're going to see in the bottom right of my hotbar. Now, what we can do though is we can put our raw rubber up here. It's going to come down. This raw rubber is going to be turned into uh, rubber bars, and that's going to then turn into raw plastic. Raw plastic can then be turned into plastic sheets. Um, let me show you guys how we do that. Come on now. Let me get the right page here. So I think it is in here. Maybe not. All right, well, screw it. I'll just show you guys from here. Uh, with these raw plastic sheets, we just put raw plastic here. That makes our sheets. And the redstone in the middle, and that gives us red net cables. Then we need a redstone clock, which is pretty basic and pretty simple. And we just get our redstone stone, cook that in the furnace, it's cobble that's been cooked, and redstone torch. Now the tricky part is how to use this uh, clock effectively. Now um, when you just drop it down like this, you can then connect redstone cable to it, but you're going to notice nothing is being passed, it's just a dead box. This cable right here is not lighting up, which is what you want this cable to be doing. To fix this, you do this, and now you can see the cable is lighting up. Now the problem with this clock um, is it, it pushes and stops pretty quickly. So unfortunately uh, for the smeltery, that may start the, uh, the smeltery over and over, and then stop the smeltery over and over, and then it just kind of gets uh, tricky. You also want to make sure that when you break this uh, redstone clock that you do not punch it. I made that mistake uh, the first time playing around with it. If you punch it, it breaks, and you're going to have some issues. Uh, also with our little vertical setup here, you can see we've got one of the little cables there. I was playing around with this trying to make this work, uh, I am not able to figure out how to have it set up uh, like this with the cables going. It's possible that you could do so with a redstone torch maybe uh, set up there or something along those lines. But I could not get it to work uh, because I couldn't place uh, specifically the uh, redstone. I can't get redstone to go up on this wall here like this. I can't get it to come up down here though just fine. So the way I have mine set up, which should allow me to scale this perfectly... Uh, and also, for those of you guys who did not see the last episode, let me go ahead and break this real quick. Hopefully it won't just destroy everything. Alright, here we are underneath. Unfortunately, that did break all the hoppers. So let me get the hoppers repositioned. That's kind of nice, though. Um, we've got just the standard casting basins right here. Above that, we've got the drains. Uh, we've got a chest here. Um, actually, I can break this without it screwing everything up. Yep. Okay, so we've got one chest here, we've got a chest here, and you can't obviously have chests right next to each other. Now I could replace these with iron chests or crystal chests or something along those lines, and probably just fine. So what you want to do is you want to click and touch that, um, right or hold shift and right click. That way the little tail, you can see the little tails right there. You go ahead and put the tail, just put it right here. You can see there's no tail. Uh, the reason there's no tail is because I didn't hold shift right click. So again. Right here, no tail, hold shift, right click the object you want it to go into and you can see the tail points into that. What that's basically saying is anything that drops into me is going to go into that chest. And then with right here, we click this one and click this one. You can see the tail here is pointing straight down into that box, which is exactly what we want. And then we're just going to drop this right here. And then we set our redstone clock there, put that there. And where's our redneck cables? There we go. And then um, you can do this one of two ways. You can set it right here and then up on top like that. Technically we don't have to do it on the bottom here actually now that I think about it. Let's break that. Break that. There we go. Now it's fully automated and it will run. Uh, vice versa, we can put it I believe right there and break this one right here. And that should run as well. 
And no, it does not. All right, so we're going to put you back there. Break you on top. So that's how it has to be, right there. And as you can see now, it is fully automated. Um, this will just continue to produce, continue to drain. And you can see right here, we are slowly working our way through all of the product. And what we're going to eventually be doing here is expanding this along the back section here and the right section here. And that way we'll be able to do 81 ingots every roughly four seconds. And the nice thing about this setup is I just, all I have to do is just drop a redstone right there and it will go completely around. And then I can do the same thing on the other side with it as well. And it should cycle just perfectly fine. You just need to make sure that the first cable is on the same plane as it, and then it will produce just fine. Alternatively, you also need to be very, very careful because, as I was mentioning in the last video, uh, with this right here, this is not a smart setup. And by that, I mean, for instance, if you put, let's say, 10 different types, like if I was to dump gold and then some aluminum in here, this setup is not smart enough to realize oh god, he only puts seven ingots in me. And so you're going to end up with situations like we've got right here with the gold where we just simply do not have enough materials uh, to finalize the draining process. We can get the aluminum out of there so that that doesn't cause any problems. Uh, we should be fine with the gold though. So this is the process that we're going to go with for now. Um, I will probably end up uh, trading this off uh, eventually with IC2 uh, fully upgraded macerators. Uh, unfortunately in Feed the Beast Unleashed, there we go, there is no rotary macerator, but uh, this macerator when fully upgraded, it still pretty much kicks ass. Um, your other alternative of course is a thermal expansion line. The problem with thermal expansion is again, it's an amazing thing, I love it, but you can't upgrade them so they are kind of slow. Uh, with this setup, it's kind of nice because you can pretty much just run a million things through it with no problem. Uh, let me get my shovel out. I just want to make sure that everything in here is working accordingly. So we're just going to break this out. You can see we've got 11 ingots here. Uh, can I get into... whoops, no, 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 bad, bad. Let's break this. And there we go. So I can't actually click on that chest from here. Um, there we go. No, I can. Now I can get down in here and service this entire setup. So you can see we've got 12 blocks of iron here. We got 13 blocks of iron there. Uh, and then from here, you obviously just connect an ME import bus on the bottom of the setup and you could easily, there we go. You could easily set up uh, the full complete automation process. So like I said, the only real hamstring we're going to run into at this point is simply just not having a way to control partial outputs with this. Uh, another solution to solve this would be each uh, build like, I don't know, 10, 15 different smelteries and each smeltery only handles one type of ore. Uh, the problem with that is uh, your initial cost setup, I mean sand, gravel, and uh, clay really aren't that rare, but you're going to be spending you know, quite a bit of it on getting that set up. Uh, although you wouldn't have to make them as big, I guess. Uh, the only reason I haven't made this big is you can produce, uh, I think this will handle two and a half stacks, almost three stacks of ore at a time. So if you were running these nonstop, honestly, you really wouldn't need more than maybe four or five layers high. And then you just make one smeltery for each type of ore and you can pretty much uh, handle just about anything. So. Anyways, I didn't want to show you guys the uh, automation of the the smeltery. A lot of you guys have been asking me to do this. Sorry it's taken me this long. Um, but there you go. That's my uh, smeltery automation process. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below if you guys have a better way to do this. Um, the only other thing you need to be careful with is... Whoops. Oh, that's going to knock everything off. Um is the the lava tank uh, you're going to want to get a liquid duct set up on top of this like this and then have some kind of setup where you're pumping it either from a magma crucible where you're producing it or maybe a uh, a pump from the nether on a tesseract or something along those lines that'll let you completely automate uh, the refueling process as well
Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, slap that like button. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next clip.